I think most AI companies right now uh, are able to access data uh, in a way that we really couldn't even just a few years before COVID, especially in health tech companies or even financial and e-commerce companies. And um, I think this is accelerating the pace of evolution of their algorithm and so product market fit which means you know, the first time funds who are working with mostly software AI companies uh, are going to see not only accelerated product uh, introduction or application into the market, accelerated pace of fundraising. And you know, we all know what's going on in the broader market, right? There's a lot of money that's uh, available to startups. And I think the... Um, runway within which to prove themselves as startups is accelerated and so the funds themselves as early stage funds are also probably seeing similar kind of trajectory for their fund portfolio performance so it's a good or not so good thing depending on we used to have maybe two two and a half years to invest and maybe about two to three years within which you might see some kind of evolution that's you know good or bad. Now I think you're able to see that within 12 to 18 months from a launch of most of the uh, early stage funds. I think as I mentioned in the prior uh, question, I think because of the evolution of these companies, both in terms of product and fundraising uh, being faster, you need to have a wider network of deep pocketed later stage investors, or even considered being a crossover fund if you have the metrics to back that up. What do I mean by that is, let's say you had a seed stage company that quickly accelerated to you know, revenues in the enterprise SaaS space, or even in the B2C space where instead of revenues, it's consumer metrics, right? Communities and whatnot then um, you have to be able to support them pretty quickly in series A, sometimes even B, which means it's millions of dollars that are being deployed within a 18 to 24 month period for a early stage seed stage company, right? And also the valuations have gone up. And so this is something that I think makes it a little more demanding of early stage funds where you know, the micro VC that could actually deploy 10 to $20 million over a two and a half, three year period um, is being truncated. So you need to have that network of later stage funds and or a crossover fund that can support companies throughout at least C to A, B, maybe even C, right? And so, and also the ability to set up SPVs, special purpose vehicles that can support these companies because you don't wanna be the investor who can't provide one of the most important thing, which is capital, which is like oxygen for startups, right? Among other things. So definitely need to prepare for that as well as other resources like a hiring recruiter network. Um, strategic advisory, uh, commercial or corporate industry advisors that can add value for business development and strategic uh, positioning or, or business model planning, right? So those are all things that you might not have expected an early stage fund to have to uh, prepare. But nowadays, I think the customer being the entrepreneur is much more savvy and demanding. Obviously, during the pandemic, it's difficult to meet new people and fundraising for a fund is a lot like raising money for a startup, right? And having been a founder CEO of a venture back company, um, is second time a fund of a first time fund is a lot like Series B, right? So you have some metrics and unlike the first time where it's almost like a concept stage, uh, you have metrics as well as hopefully your existing LPs are backing you. And so that's definitely helpful 
And, you know, if the metrics are where you're starting to see 15, 16% IRR uh, in your earlier stage funds that you founded, uh, that is something that should be able to drive meaningful interest. But again, you know, not being able to meet people <laughs> in person is I think helped by events like this super return where, you know, we can actually connect with LPs of quality who've actually had success in meeting emerging or new funds, right? Or second time fundraisers. So hopefully um, uh, be able to make some quality connections with uh, the right kind of LPs. I think being Asian American, I, I have a hard time calling myself successful, <laughs> but I would say yes, I've, I've gone through the gauntlet a few times. And I think the lessons learned, the most important thing in this business is transparency and integrity and responsibility, both to the LPs, but also to the founder CEOs, right? Uh, time is so, so important and precious. And I always tell our founders, your time is not something that anyone can buy. So you're investing with your time and effort. And I have to essentially asset allocate toward teams that are not only aligned with the right market opportunity, with the right technology, but also your fit of where you are in your career, what you want to do. People often term that as passion or grit or persistence. But when I think about that, those are the things that you also have to look for in your founding team. And yes, I miss those. You know, they, they look great, you know, in the beginning and they go to found a business, especially seed stage, right? I mean, having done it myself, literally out of my living room. Um, you start the process and even when you fundraise, that's when the fun begins, right? And it's, you're doing seven days a week from 6, 7 a.m. till midnight, 2 a.m. for years. And people may say, oh, where's work-life balance? When you're trying to create something from nothing, I think that concept is a little uh, too ambitious, especially in the first few years. And I found that to be true even for funds, right? And I'd say right now we're Catalyst is my fund one is my third fund that I founded. But even the first Catalyst fund was a lot similar to Visionaire fund one, right? You know, and I didn't have a little baby baking in my tummy at the time for Catalyst. So that made it a little bit easier. But I think the, the lesson learned is um, being clear, transparent, and high integrity. And of course, you gotta be smart and lucky, right? And, and know where, what you can do and what you can't do and be honest about it. So uh, that, those are some of the lessons learned. If I were to talk about all of them, it would take forever, but I think, these are the lessons that people don't talk about beyond the metrics and whatnot.